Okay, so to start off, I am just not gonna, I'm not gonna be on here like the whole time, but I did want to talk about a few different things. I did want to talk about a few things that I've been noticing that I've actually wanted to talk about for a couple of years that I've wanted to talk about, mainly when it revolves around the mindsets of children. And, oh. And I did want to um, really just say all this that I wrote down earlier. Wrote all this down earlier, like a couple of topics that I wanted to talk about. That I've always wanted to talk about for years. I've always wanted to say this since I was very, very young. Because I noticed all this type of stuff when I used to go to school physically and everything. And always like, you know, be around teachers and everything. You know, the usual school instead of, you know, being online. But I wanted to introduce people, especially like parents and everything, about the mindsets of children and how impacted and different they are today compared to beforehand. It's like a lot of things that I noticed that's been going on with children that really like opened my eyes to one thing that I noticed. Um, okay, let me focus. But... It was an interaction that I had with one 15 year old girl that had baby really question and think about what was happening to the youth of ch like uh, to of today. And I noticed how she was really blatantly just odd, different, weird, disrespectful, all kinds of things like that. Like it was the weirdest interaction that I ever had. It was like a split second with a child that I talked to. Like it was at random too, cause she responded to me. Cause like at the time I was on this, um this fun little app thing that is called Superfly. And like every time that you go on the app, you would like, you know, say a question or something like that that you have, and then somebody else would answer it. And I like putting in like little cute questions going like, okay, what do you do to make yourself happy and stuff like that when you're sad or something like that. And this child said something so stupid. She said, oh, I like to cut my throat. What 15 year old little girl is supposed to be talking about something like suicidal stuff like that as a joke? Like she literally desensitized so much to the point she thinks that those type of things are funny or okay to interact with random strangers to say that that's a joke. Like that's a really hee hee ha ha funny moment. And I said, no, I'm not gonna entertain that because you are a child thinking that way. I know that a lot of people love to entertain children thinking like that, but that is really not the right direction at all. Because when you entertain stuff like that, like um, saying like how other people really do have suicidal thoughts and all the type of stuff like that that go on in their life, that if you make jokes about it and everything and you become desensitized to it, you don't actually sympathize with those people at all. If you look at what their pain is as a joke, completely. So then for her to feel so comfortable to say it like that and her being a 15 year old little girl was the most concerning thing I've ever seen in my life. And then at the same time of her, how she even continued to start talking even more disrespectful, nasty as ever. I'm seeing that like when you see children like that, you know that they haven't really, a lot of them, they like to absorb whatever is going on in their own home. There's children like that, that be having those type of things going on in their own home talking all kinds of gross ways and all that and then being acceptable to them as children and that's just molding them for destruction because children absorb everything that you let them get away with every little thing I would be having that if I was a parent okay I would not be having that but it's the thing is it's like um the more you entertain that type of behavior then they'll literally absorb that for the rest of their life all the time it's like that small thing can become so large really quick like how it will be for some children I've, I've seen this happen to a lot of times i'm gonna give you an example i have a friend that would always act like she had depression she thought it was so hilarious all the time in school and everything she thought it was really entertaining some people like huh yeah i'm depressed you know <laughs> you know that's my life and i'm like okay and then I'm like, you know, you should really stop or you'll end up really catching depression. I told her that when I was little, I'm like, you know, that can actually really happen. The more you speak it on yourself, 
the more it'll become that way. It's possible. Like, don't, you need to stop. And she was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> and she kept doing it. And then years later, I'm seeing her with depression. I'm seeing her taking pills, all that type of stuff for depression. It's terrible. But it's like, it's so many children that be the ones that you call dysfunctional, the ones that are, uh, let's say, um, fast. The children that are really fast and everything like that feel like they grown, talking any kind of way to anybody how they want to and everything. Some adults find that hilarious. That's not hilarious. That's not funny at all because that's a dysfunctional child. And when you have a dysfunctional child, you have a dysfunctional um, adult that's going to grow up that way. Like she's going to become that. Okay? Because I know that there's a, there's a lot of people that love to entertain these type of things when it shouldn't be entertained at all. It should be shut down immediately. And when I had told that little girl that I told y'all about earlier... When she was talking to me that kind of way, I shut it down completely. And she didn't expect that. She didn't expect that. Like, you are 15 years old. You don't talk that way to me. And she went silent because that terrified her. Sometimes that gets it. Sometimes it scares them. And sometimes it makes them think, like, she didn't think it was funny. Me talking about suicide and hurting myself and all that wasn't funny. Like, yeah, it's not funny. There's nothing funny or comical about that. That's just disgusting. Uh, mainly oh I'm just really just hold up there we go but I'm just going on based on a list right here I'm just reminding y'all really quick but okay here I go the mindsets of children are very very fragile the more that you give them in their life any type of thing if they go by your example a lot all the time and it's that when parents don't really pay attention to that or just give them a screen or a phone or something like that, then the internet raising your child. I hope y'all realize that. Because there are some children that are literally just raised by other people online. I've seen that happen. I get it how some people get really busy and want their child out their face or something like that. But then you got the whole internet with filled with everything and anything raising your kid. And then they start going around talking like that. I've seen kids so messed up and desensitized to the real world and knowing real world stuff, but joking about it like it's not even something you should take seriously. And then when they have some events that happen in their life like that, then, you know, they 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 get really messed up. I've seen all different kinds of children that you call the ones that you want them to be away from you, like the ones you don't want around your family or around your children or something like that. The ones that really need that much help or guidance that they didn't get. They are the most, they're the most needed for that type of structure. And they actually like it. Because I'm going to give you an example with, um, here's the thing. With this child that I remember sitting down talking to before. She was very little. She was very cute. She was really small and adorable. And like she, um... I think it was like a, a visiting or something like that from another friend or something. And like, I was like, well, okay. Uh, do you want like a toy or something like that? Cause you know, I'm a toy maker or something. And like, I was watching her and she was like, yeah, let's play with toys. And so like, the thing is, I noticed some things that were off about this little girl. Like, I'm like, I can't figure it out. And like, she, it's like the way how she was walking, her little demeanor. I'm like, she's adorable, but there's something wrong. So it's like, especially here's a test thing that I like to do sometimes when I ever interact with children to know what's going on or something like that was like bothering them or something. I play dolls with them and I'm going to explain why, because it actually shows the mindset of the child. It shows it very well and easily. Because it's like it shows their home. It shows what they think is funny and what they think is bad and all that. Because it's, you know, it's their little characters interacting. So I'm like, okay, let's play dolls. And so I saw like when I was making the, um, the characters act all nice to each other. She didn't like that. She didn't like the characters acting nice to each other or nothing like that. The mom like giving uh, the baby like her son or something like a can of food or something like like anything anything like giving them some chips or something like that and being nice she didn't like that when they were acting nice but when I started making the little the um the child doll 
start being mean and stuff like that and the mom yelling at the um the little boy doll she would get happy she would laugh you know like she would be like <laughs> and stuff like it entertained her like that was the real life like that was how the house is supposed to be and i was like i, I kind of was appalled for a second like i was like dang and i'm not just saying that in a way of how like children love you know random funny stuff or something she was literally like this is it like this is how it's supposed to be and that concerned me so much but mainly when you have those type of children that are hot-headed and hot-tempered or the ones that are the really bad type kids and stuff like that don't give up on them they love it when somebody takes the time out of their day to actually talk to them and center themselves talking to them and understanding them and seeing what their life is like and all that type of stuff. Because those children be crying, all kinds of pain and all that. But they just have to have that one person or someone, just someone to actually talk to them and understand what's, their, what's going on with them. And it's that um, they be grateful. It's like afterwards, it's like sometimes they would get a little bit shocked or afraid or something like that. But then it starts to resonate in their mind. Because those children, they can be incredibly gifted. They can be incredibly gifted, smart in everything, be the brightest child, but just be exposed to all kinds of dumb stuff that they shouldn't have never gotten into. And it's like when you don't actually interact with them while they're young and like help them grow, then they're going to become a dysfunctional adult. They're going to be on the street, something crazy, you know, but, but still, I can't tell the future, but you know what I'm saying? So... I'm going to say, hold on. I went through a couple of these things. Oh, yeah, this weird children code switching. I hope y'all, I mean, I know y'all probably, like some of y'all probably know about this or whatever, or have done it yourselves. But like, you know how some children would switch up how they interact with, um, like how they interact with people at home and how they interact with people like that's their friends or at school or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, so like they would act all different and high, nice and like they got morals and stuff like that at home. But when they get to school, they start acting like a fool and all kinds of dumb stuff like that. So it's like, it, it's a really weird subject with them. Sometimes they do have really good functional homes. Sometimes they don't. I really don't know because I'm not speaking on a specific child. But it's that sometimes when I even witnessed this myself. It's like when you're around a bunch of children that's always acting bad and you're around that environment with all kinds of children in school, you get pressured into feeling like you have to act like them or like to do certain things like them to seem like you're inside of school, like this is cool or whatever like that. And you get to start acting not like yourself. And I've seen that happen to so many people. And going like, well, back before I, you know, went to school, I really liked reading all that type of stuff. And then I started hanging out with George or something like that. And then now he don't even want to pick up a book. Like, it's some weird stuff that happens to children all the time. And saying how they switch up their personalities in seconds to please others. That's really sad. And I can't stand when that happens. It's like, it's a terrible thing because like you have to teach your children to be themselves as much as possible. As much as possible for them not to actually feel like they have to change their whole thinking or direction inside of some type of way. You got to start dressing or acting a certain way to please other kids that will probably never be around them for the next five years. Like it's not, it's, it makes no point. Plus, a lot of people, like, oh, my God, I needed to talk about this. Like, uh, hold on. So, hold on. Let me just see. Just trying to make sure I get everything on here. I'm really talking really fast, so I'm, like, hurrying up. So, when it comes to this, I always notice is that, like, um, with young women, with young girls... They would feel that they have to act certain ways or things like that to like attract other people or certain things like that and all that. It's really weird. I can't stand it. And it's really sad, you know? 
Because young women and young men, they change themselves a lot to please others and having that type of weird pressure. They don't see it as pressure sometimes at all. And they just go like, well, I'm about to just go with it or something like that. But they don't they don't understand that. When you see your child, like say like um like your daughter or something, like now Instead of her going like, okay, mom, I'm, on the pro- I'm about to go dress, get dressed up or something like that. Now she's screaming, period. Now she's calling herself a bad bee, all this type of stuff like that, right? And you like, dang, what's the switch up? Like, I thought she was saying like, oh my God, I'm going to do so well in school. And now she's over here thinking that Instagram is life and all kinds of stupid stuff like that. Like that don't even, that don't even matter. That won't mold her future. Okay, that's what I'm saying. And it's like, I hate it, especially when, I hate in general when people call themselves bad bees, honestly. I'm not saying that inside of a mean way or something like that. You call yourself whatever you want, but still it's not good no ways. Because it's like, literally, I like using words based off of the original definition, okay? So when I hear bad, I actually think this is this ain't worth nothing. And then when you put in the B word on top of that, on back of that, I'm thinking of a pregnant dog. So you literally run around calling yourself, you know, a good for nothing pregnant dog. That's what I think. That's what I think every single time I hear that word, you know, that little thing, it's, it just seems like self insulting. So I don't do that at all. I don't see it as a compliment, but that's just me. Okay. But I'm just going to get back on what I'm saying. And then also seeing how young men would also act differently. They start talking funny, make the voice deeper, all kinds of dumb stuff like that. And it's not like a, I mean, it's like children end up trying to feel incredibly uncomfortable in the inside while project, projecting all this type of stuff to have any type of weird uh, atmosphere to act differently around all kinds of other children that won't even care in the end. Like, no, like, seriously, like, I've seen that happen to way too many children throughout middle school, elementary. I saw it when it hit, like, seriously. And I was like, what happened to y'all? It was the weirdest stuff. And it's like, I I, I couldn't stand it, really, because, like, children are meant to be children they're not supposed to be miniature adults and plus they're even absorbing and acting like dysfunctional adults okay that's what i'm gonna say because that isn't a part of adulthood to start talking a certain way calling yourself bad b all this type of stupid stuff like that and then like they think it's a flex to you know drink some drink something that they shouldn't be drinking or smoke something that they shouldn't be smoking I've been seeing 13 year olds and 12 year olds talking about, oh yeah, should I go roll up this and roll up that and smoke? When I was 12, I was trying to figure out if I was about to go in the spelling bee or not. When I was 12, come on. I'm like, this is the saddest stuff that I've ever seen. I hate it when children act messed up and all that because they see it as fine or functional or any of that when they constantly will come up with problems and problems after that after that after that because i see these children all the time would end up having internal problems different ways of depression they be getting all different kinds of messed up stuff in them but they'll think it's all right like it's a good thing like it's it, it's the weirdest thing and i hate it even when adults do it hate it i hate it all the time but it's like it's too concerning and here's another thing. Pedophiles love to go after those little girls or little boys that think they grown all the time. And by the way, I hate it to like, and I would to say this all like if I posted a, like a story thing about this before, I think. And it was like on um, how they pedophiles have any type of color, any type of look, any type of gender. It don't matter. And I hated that the fact that in society it's always the face of pedophilia that most people think of, they think of a man, even though it'd be a woman and a man hand in hand all the time. I've witnessed this since I was little. I had all different kinds of people like these weirdos and all that, that be pedophiles trying to come up to me and trying to mess with me and all the times, kinds of stupid stuff that I had to deal with throughout my childhood. And they would love to always try to pick up the children that they think think they're grown 
or think that they're any type of like thinking that they can do whatever they want and all that. So it's like, it's literally like putting sheep in a whole pack of wolves. It's like you got the little, like, um, like a little 14 year old girl thinks she grown and all that type of stuff, doing grown things and all that when she don't even understand life fully. She only been here for said 14 years. That's 14 seconds. Okay. She haven't been on this earth for long. And then they take advantage of that like crazy. Pedophiles always love to take advantage of those feeble-minded children. And I hate it. I hate it with all my heart. I really do. Because I want to really work with children when I get when I get more established with that kind of thing. Because I really would, I would do this. But I wanted to say how, how, how pedophiles come in all kinds of different ways. They come, women ones, or they're just as horrible as the men. I hate it that in society, a lot of people love to pass on and not even think about a woman being a pedophile, even though they are. And they're sneaky, they're terrible. I hate, I can't stand them. Because a lot of people are lenient when it comes to, to women in general, and women in general. And I don't like it. A lot of people are. And I'm not saying all of us, but you know. And the thing is, is that I would see how people would protect their little girls from men all the time and everything. And I'm like, that's a good thing for like the bad men. Yes. But you need to protect your little boys from the bad women. That's a lot of things that the um, that parents don't be really thinking. About. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. But it would be that I'd see 24-7 protection for that little girl. But they let their little boy go out and do whatever he want. And like he's like 13, 14, 15 years old. I feel that parents really need to teach their sons and their daughters the same about the dangers in life, about pedophilia and stuff like that. Because I keep on seeing little boys that would have so much mental damage from from women and men that are pedophiles that would go after them while they're, you know, while they're young and everything, messing them up. And then feeling that they'll get away with it and all that because he's a boy. And I see these female pedophiles always never getting caught and stuff like that. They always think they're never going to get caught. But because they're women. And I can't stand that. I can't stand that with wholeheartedly. I can't stand that. Because it, it causes so much trauma and damage all the time to young children. And then they feel that their voices aren't heard. And they feel that nobody's going to believe them because this woman, like, it's like, I've seen this case. I actually helped a child, like, before about his case that he um, got sexually assaulted. And he was um, drunk and everything like that. And, like, this woman took advantage of him and messed him up and had left him, um, had left him while he was all messed up. And he was, he was terribly damaged. And he was talking to me and he didn't know what to do, how to even get help or any type of evidence. And, like, around his area he had like um it was a train station where it was at and like i'm like well you should try getting some cameras i mean the area might have cameras something like that who are you with i did all that for him so he could get this situated and he was very thankful and i was happy to help him and like you know go to the police all the type of stuff i told him every single last step that i could possibly think of to help him but then he was telling me how his family was acting like it was okay because you know oh you found a woman a woman liked you you should be thankful how are you gonna tell a tell a person that's sexually assaulted to be thankful that it happened that is disgusting i never want to hear that ever come out of anybody's mouth when it comes to sexual assault or anybody getting hurt in any kind of nasty violent way of any of that that is uncalled for and that's disgusting because people would be thinking different if he was a woman and getting messed up by a man that's the thing that I hate. I hate it so much. You need to protect your sons. Protect your sons as much as you protect your daughters. Because they matter. Their feelings do. Because it impacts them so much to the point they feel like men are always taught this. I know that a lot of men are always taught to keep their mouth shut when it comes to feelings so they don't feel weak or be taken for as weak. But the thing is, when men actually talk about their feelings and say what's wrong with them, they are stronger than they ever are than all the other men. I'm serious. They really are. And the thing is, is that they're happy they get to talk about their feelings. They're, they're free from that type of mental bondage that is put in men. 
that type of mental bondage because all the other men will be terrified and scared of being thought of as weak, but he don't care. Okay. He don't care. And he's over here saying every single last thing that happened in his life and he's getting help. He's getting help. He's healing. He's going to be even in better man, a better shape than ever because he got that weight lifted off of him. And I feel that every man should feel that way. Every little boy, every little girl, every little woman. I swear that goes for everybody to me. But still, I like it when men speak about what's happened in their life and their past and all that. Because it shows their representation of morals and their strength. And that's, I, I can't stand it when children get hurt like that. And that's why I helped him. I helped that boy immediately. I helped him immediately. And it's just that like people love to look over when it comes to when it comes to sexual assault with boys, with little boys. You'll think about it like, oh, my God, he got like sexually assaulted by a man. But when you think about it with a woman, people start acting stupid going like, oh, you know, he got lucky. You wouldn't be saying the same thing if your daughter got sexually assaulted by a man. You're going to say she got lucky. No, no, she didn't. She got molested. It's the same exact boat. It's the same boat. They work hand in hand. Women pedophile and men pedophiles, they work hand in hand together. They are the same thing. They are the same color. They are devils. And that's what I think about them like that. Because they're evil. They go after children. They mess them up for the rest of their life. And they carry that pain until they're adults and it blows up on them sometimes. And that's why I, I really, I just really wanted to say that. Because I've had all kinds of experiences when I was little getting um, all kinds of different type of pedophiles and all that coming up, coming up to me, trying to bother me since I was very little. And I always dodged them because I knew what to do. I knew what to do. If I didn't know what to do, I really don't know how I'll be. And I actually almost got kidnapped when I was a kid. When I was very, very little, I almost got kidnapped. I did. I was about to get took inside of a, a white van, like how the people like to joke about the white van. Yeah, it's real. I almost got took when I was a kid, but if one of my parents wasn't there, I'd probably be dead. So it's like, you have to be observant about your children in general, boy or girl, but seriously, you need to let your sons speak. You have to let your daughters speak when it comes to anything, when it comes to sexual assault, when it comes to anything of that nature. And especially if you have your children out here thinking that they're grown, they go after those kids the most. They love going after those kind of children the most because they're like, oh, you think you grown? You think you th this and that and all that? Like, you really know everything and all that? And that little kid, you know, hyped up like, yeah, you know? And then they end up messing up that kid even worse. They go after the ones that they think that don't have home training, the ones that you think are out on the street, the ones that you think that aren't really being taught anything at home. They love to mess up those children so much. They like to damage them even more. And that's why I do also like to say parents need to start observing their children's activities when it comes to online things a lot because they will take in the same exact stupid stuff from online, messing them up and all that psychologically and subliminally, subliminally. And it would create them to be more dysfunctional and then they'll become dysfunctional adults because I feel that really it's incredibly important to talk about children to talk about everything that's going on inside their lives and to see what's actually what they're what they're taking in all the time what's doing this for them every day and it's that it's like I really am just saying this not because of just saying it just to say it I say this because I care I've been caring about this since I was a very very young child and it's like these children, it's like, I, I I can't stand it when they're all disrespectful and weird and all that type of stuff like that. It's just that I know that that child is messed up internally. And that needs to be confronted. That needs to be said. Something needs to be talked about for them. And I think that, that I think I've pretty much covered everything on the list right here. I think I did. Yep. If I did, that was quick. Okay. Bye, y'all. That's all I wanted to say.